Judy got my heart, Barney got the gun, Hyman got the strap, I'ma set him up. My life is a movie like a cinema. Two pocket, I'm about to hit him up. Knuckles sit him down, chop a lift him up. Bang balls, I'm about to rip him up. Gone off that hitter, baby, I wanna talk to you. Hi, my name is Britt Howell. I'm one of the owners of Vicious Auto Works, and in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to properly tint. Some people refer to it as nightshade tail lights. The vehicle I will be performing this on is a 2011 Audi Q5. As you can see here, here's the tail light. And right below it, we actually have a light in the bumper and we're gonna do that as well. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna tape my perimeter so I can protect my paint before I sand it. At Vicious Auto Works, we use a 3M automotive refinish masking tape. This is a the yellow tape. Um, it's three quarter inch and it works great. As you can see here, I'm just following the line of the paint. And it doesn't have to be 100% perfect, just enough to protect the paint on the body because you don't want to scratch the customer's paint. When you're done, it should look something like this. On our bottom lights in the bumper, we actually have the reverse light. And I actually want to keep that clear, that way the customer can see when they're backing up. And I'm going to go ahead and sand it but I'm actually gonna mask it off before I apply my nightshade and before I clear coat it, I'm gonna pull the masking off and I'm gonna clear coat over everything. So that'll remain clear and the rest of it will be tinted, but it'll all have clear coat on it. Now, before we nightshade these tail lights, we actually have to prep it. And I'm gonna use a wet sanding method. And uh, this is a piece of 1500 grit wet dry sandpaper. Um, I'm gonna try fold it and I'm actually gonna wet sand these tail lights. Now when I wet sand, I actually like to use a squirt bottle filled with water. You can use a hose or a bucket of water if you want, that works too. And my very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna actually take a little bit of water and I'm just gonna kinda squirt it like that. And I'm actually gonna take a blue towel. So it's just a blue shop towel is all it is, or you can use a paper towel. I'm just gonna kinda wipe any dirt or grime I might have on these lights off. Um, that way I don't take my sandpaper and put a big scratch because there's some sort of rock on there or something. Um, it's just a good cautious first step. Now I'm gonna take my squirt bottle again and I'm actually gonna spray the light down a little bit. And I'm gonna take my uh, tri-folded sandpaper like this. And I'm actually gonna do, just do kind of a, using my palm, the flat part of my fingers, just do a little circle style sanding. Try to avoid going past your tape and scratching the paint. So, Usually it takes a couple passes of this. If you have to, dry the light off. Inspect where you sanded. And if you missed a spot, go over it. And when you're done, you just want to wipe the sanding sludge and water and residue off your light. And uh, you'll be able to see where you've missed and if you need to go over anything. After it's dry, it should look a little something like that. You can kind of see that it's dull in these areas. You can still see a little bit of gloss right there. Um, if I wanted to, I could go over that again with wet sandpaper, but when you're wet sanding, it's kind of hard to see what you're doing. So I'm actually going to cheat and I'm going to use, we've got some scotch bright here and this is a red scotch bright. It's a little aggressive, but I have a used piece. that's a little worn out. If not, you can use a gray scotch bright and that would help. I'm actually just going to take it and I'm just going to get the edges and just lightly go over. I'm not pushing hard. I'm not going to get it too aggressive because this can leave quite a scratch. So, and it is very important to actually get the edges of your light and actually scuff the edge of the light. It is important because if you don't get good adhesion there, it's potentially paint could blow off the light um, in a car wash or when you're pressure washing or just even just driving around day to day. Now what we're doing here is actually getting a mechanical bite. Yes, a chemical bond is strong and sometimes stronger than a mechanical bite, but um, we actually want this mechanical bond um, with this transparent nightshade that we're going to use. So it's important to make sure every glossy, shiny spot is scuffed, all the edges are scuffed before you proceed. Our light is now 100% scuffed. You can see how dull it is. That's what you want it to look like. You can now remove your tape. Next thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna use um, compressed air. We're actually gonna blow the water out of the cracks. You don't want any water dripping out while you're in the middle of painting.
after you dry it, you're going to want to actually clean your surrounding areas for masking. So I'm just going to take a dry towel, I'm just going to wipe the dust away. Now time to mask it. So once again, I'm going to use that yellow 3M automotive refinish masking tape. It's three quarter inch, it's the yellow grade. And I'm going to precision mask around here. Anything you don't mask will get painted. So it needs to be very precise. Do it over again if you have to. Now this vehicle has a lift gate and the tail light actually wraps around and opens up right where the tail light gap is. So um, if I don't mask the jam here, overspray will actually proceed into the door jam and you'll see like a white, like a white mist of overspray inside the jam. So in order to not do that, I put some six inch masking paper and tape along the edge of the body and along the inside edge of the tail light. So now when I close it, it's gonna actually sandwich together and there's no way overspray will get through there. Now after you get your precision masking done, it should look a little something like this. You can see nice crisp lines. Use your fingernail to push the tape in the crack. Here I have a masking station. It's loaded up with six inch masking paper, 12 inch and 18 inch. It's got that yellow three quarter inch 3M tape. Um, it's kind of nice because you can pull it out. It's just like a little dispenser. It tears like that and I can go to my vehicle and place the paper around the edge. And you can see I'm just placing it right on top of my previous masking. Now when you're done masking, it should look a little something like this. Now even though I'm in a cross draft paint booth, I still want to mask the rest of the car. If I don't put something over this part of the car, um, the flow of the booth will actually pull, pull the overspray over the car and it'll get all over the windows and everything. We'll have a very unhappy customer or we'll have a lot of hours and time into detailing and that would take away from our profit. So we're gonna make sure to use some shark skin. It's made by USC. There's different brands. 3M makes it, Carborundum makes it. Anyways, it's a paintable plastic. Uh, it's basically just a giant tarp and we're gonna cover the rest of the vehicle with it. There it is all tarped up guys. Now that we're ready to paint, I'm going to use a Master Pro wax and grease remover along with a blue towel. I'm going to put a little bit on this towel and I'm actually going to wipe down the lights. Um, we need to get them clean, free of grease and any dirt. This is probably one of the most important steps to ensure adhesion. I like to use a little bit of compressed air to ensure that it's dry. Um, this stuff evaporates, but um, just insurance. On this particular make and model, there's a reverse light on the lower light. Um, I want to make sure I keep that clear, that way they can see when they're backing up. So I'm going to once again use the 3M yellow tape and I'm going to precision mask a nice little box around that light. There's actually a little bit of a line there. I could follow that, but I'm going to go a little bit on the inside of it just because uh, there's a little bit of red and I don't want that to show. So I'm actually going to go a little bit on the inside, that way I can just get the clear box. Should look a little something like that when it's done. Now before we apply the nightshade, we're gonna apply some adhesion promoter. This brand is by Duplicolor. Um, all we're gonna do is uh, shake it up and we're gonna put a couple mist coats on these lights. And the reason we're doing that is because these are raw plastic and paint isn't really made to adhere to raw plastic. So we're gonna do that. And you're probably asking, well, how do you make sure that the clear is gonna adhere to this when I pull that? Well, you gotta pick and choose your battle sometimes. So. Um, it should be pretty good if I just get, you know, 75% of the light and just that little small percent of the light um, won't have adhesion promoter, but um, it'll all be kind of locked down with the rest of the light. So I'm not too worried about that one little spot. One of the product lines we use is VHT to make a nightshade, flame proof paint for headers, wrinkle paint for valve covers, and many other special coatings. So we're going to use VHT's nightshades to tint these tail lights. Um, you can do about three to four sets of tail lights with each can. They're about 12 to $15 at your local auto parts store or you can order it online. Um, some guys like to use base coat to tint their tail lights, which basically means they use black base coat in a mix with a little bit of DBC 500 by PPG, which uh, makes it a little more transparent. Um, some guys can do that, but uh, that's a lot of monies down the drain. 
So I like to use nightshades. You can do about three or four steps, like I said, and it's only about 12 to 15 bucks. So yeah, there you go. Make sure you shake it really good, especially if it's been sitting on the shelf for a while. Now I know you guys weren't born yesterday and you're not monkeys, but the best thing to do from here forward is read the instructions by the can and follow them. So BHT says to hold the can about eight to 10 inches away and between each minute of use, um, you wanna shake the can. So here we go. So that's one coat. You can see it's definitely a little bit tinted. Um, we're probably gonna do about two and a half to three coats. This customer doesn't want them black. I love doing them black, but um, this customer just kind of wants more of a smoked look. So um, one coat's definitely not enough, and I think it's gonna take about two or three. Um, this is a custom job, so every time's a little bit different. Now for safety, I'd wait about five to 10 minutes between coats, depending on the temperature. In our booth right now, it's 64 degrees, so that's about what we like to shoot at. Um, it's a controlled environment. I realize not everybody has that. So here we go for coat number two. All right, guys, that's about three coats. I believe we uh, achieved the level of tint that our customer wanted. I just got done spraying the last coat about 10 minutes ago. Now is a good time where it's a little sticky still, yet still wet, to pull this tape. Now to achieve the level of gloss we want, I'm gonna use Omni's MC161. It's a high solids urethane clear along with Omni's MH-167. It's a fast top coat hardener. Basically what that means is it's gonna speed up the drying process of the clear coat. I'm gonna use the fast because it's a small part and it's not a top surface. Now this clear is actually mixed two to one. So I'm actually gonna find the two to one mix ratio on my cup and I'm gonna actually go up to the two and then with the clear and then I'm gonna go up to the next two to the right of it with the activator and that's gonna give us our two to one mix ratio and I'm gonna make sure I stir it up really good. To spray our high quality automotive paint, I'm gonna use an Iwata LPH 400. It's a gravity fed HDLP gun. Make sure before you put the paint into your gun, you use a paint strainer, um, it'll help get any particles that may have landed in your paint or were already sitting in the cup or were already inside the can of the paint. Take your gun, hook it into your supplied air system, and you're ready to go. painting that you're always using the correct respirator your health is important all right guys that's three coats of clear coat we're going to go ahead and let that cure before we do our wet sand and polish all right guys i'll let it cure overnight it's plenty dry now and now i'm going to be doing some wet sanding and polishing i'm going to be using a 2000 grit wet dry sandpaper i'm going to be wet sanding and i'm going to put a little block in it and i'm going to wrap it up wet the light down I'm gonna take my block. I'm gonna do some circle action sanding. And I'm not getting crazy because I don't wanna burn through the paint, but I just wanna knock down any dust particles and I wanna knock down any texture that may have been left behind from the paint. I want these to look like they're like this from the factory. After wet sanding, I'm gonna be using a three inch mini air polisher and some buffing compound and pads to polish. Done, now we can unmask the vehicle.
Drop falls, I'ma sip it in a minute Spit it, then I get up in it for a minute Never kick it, never lick it Either gotta cool down, gotta take a breather Heat of evanescence on me, but I need to see the wife up I be in a two-seater Judy got my heart, Corny got the gun Hyman got the strap, I'ma set him up My life is a movie like a cinema Tupac and I'm about to hit him up Knuckle sit him down, chop a lift him up Bang balls, I'm about to rip him up Gone off that hitter, baby, I wanna talk to you I got hitters that'll bang, bang, yeah I don't wanna hurt you, no